Hey everybody, I hope that you all had a great week. I want to take a couple of minutes, like every week, give you an update on some of what's happened in Washington, D.C. I want to cover cybersecurity, PFAS, and a little bit about Lake Okeechobee, uh, and some of that will have to do with China as well. Now on Monday, uh, we woke up to the news that tens of thousands of Americans, small businesses, even some government contractors, that they'd been impacted by a cyber breach targeting Microsoft Exchange. And while they've not claimed responsibility for it yet, it's very likely that this was Beijing and the Chinese Communist Party. We know, we're all aware, cyber attacks are more and more common. Hundreds of thousands of attacks uh, on a daily basis come against uh, government agencies and, and businesses here in the United States, and they're becoming more aggressive. We all know that the U.S. needs to take steps to make sure that, that our agencies and our businesses and our citizens are defended against these, uh, these kinds of attacks. Now, Republicans have been leading this effort, and this week we passed several bills that, truthfully, we shouldn't have to pass them because these should be things that the agencies are just doing, like do your job uh, kind of bills, but we passed them anyways to make sure that they are doing their jobs. One of them, the Cyber Sense Act of 2021, it establishes a program to test and make sure that the technology behind our power grid isn't susceptible to cyber attacks. I think we all know that it is susceptible to cyber attacks. So this is kind of like, duh, why agency do we have to tell you to do this? It's your job as an agency, CISA, to make sure that this occurs. But apparently we're in a situation that we do have to pass that law. So that's what went on on that front this week. We also passed a Republican-led bill called the DHS Industrial Control Systems Capabilities Enhancement Act. It allows cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency, CISA, that one that I just spoke about, to work with local governments to protect their systems against these types of attacks. It's absolutely ridiculous that we have to pass bills to tell them to do these things or to be more robust in doing these things. These bills, they're a start. Obviously, more needs to be done, um, but most importantly, the U.S. needs to be tough on China, be tough on Russia and any adversary that threatens our security or the security of our allies. And I want to go into something that occurred this past week. I sit on the Committee of Foreign Affairs. We had a markup on a bill known as the Eagle Act that was supposed to be all about how America was going to be tough on China. And to, to put into perspective, how incapable, uh, the, the truthfully, it's the Democrat side of the aisle is, how incapable they are of being tough on China. Let me just give you a couple examples of things that they wouldn't pass in that legislation because they're so scared of offending China. They were afraid to support a free Tibet, afraid to support a free Taiwan. I had one of the amendments that was my own amendment that said we need to declassify so that every citizen out there in the country can, can be aware of all of the intelligence that doesn't compromise sources and methods of obtaining that intelligence. But they, they voted unanimously on the Democrat side against releasing the intelligence about the origins of COVID-19 so that you, the, the we the people in the United States of America, could, could read that intelligence for yourselves. You're not allowed to do that because that was voted against by Democrats on the other side. That's how afraid they are of China and, and it's ridiculous. I could argue about this and rant and rave about this for a very long time. I want to go to the domestic front um, and talk about PFAS legislation. We passed something called the PFAS Action Act, um, and it has to do with PFAS chemicals, which can be found in things like fire extinguishers, old fire extinguisher foam, nonstick pans. They're dangerous to the health of our communities, to our environment. They're known as forever chemicals because they're incredibly difficult to remove. Now, unfortunately, our community, uh, you know, Fort Pierce and other areas, have experience with PFAS. You might remember that last year, the soil and water uh, the, it, around former Indian River State College's fire training facility tested positive for the presence of those toxins. And in 2019, the city of Stewart had to pay about $2 million to decontaminate drinking water after the, the substances were linked to, to three separate wells. Now, despite their links to cancer and serious environmental concerns, the EPA, has not regulated them or required testing, the PFAS Action Act would change that and make that a requirement. The legislation would require the EPA to designate PFAS 
as hazardous materials and establish a national drinking water standard. And I'm certainly uh, in that fight 100%, especially as a father with four young children. So, you know, I, I think I can say pretty honestly, bipartisanship is rare in Congress these days, but I'm glad that Republicans and Democrats were able to work together in this way on this piece of legislation. Lastly, many of you might have heard that a big decision was made regarding the management of Florida waterways. Now, you remember back in 2018, I wrote and passed a law requiring the Army Corps of Engineers to, to rewrite the way that they manage the system for Lake Okeechobee and its surrounding waterways. Now, three years later, we're seeing the results of passing that law. The Army Corps has tentatively selected a plan known as Balanced Alternative CC. We were begging you all go out, write, call, email the Corps of Engineers and talk to them about Plan CC. You did that. We won that piece of the fight, and that's where this fight is really exhausting. Now we are moving into another phase of this where they're looking at alternative CC and trying to figure out how they're going to, quote, optimize alternative CC. We need to make sure that it doesn't become a bait and switch that actually takes those numbers that we agreed to on CC and pushes them further in the other direction. So um, I'm gonna ask, as, as exhausted as we are on this fight, it, I'm telling you it is still a battle every single day to keep this out of our water. And so I, I would beg your patience on this. Please stay in that fight. Please continue to write the Corps of Engineers, email the Corps of Engineers, call the Corps of Engineers. Keep doing that on a weekly basis, telling them, their policy needs to be do no harm. That means we, we get no benefit from Lake Okeechobee, so you need to start from the point that you're not hurting us before you start doling out the benefits of it. Don't hurt us by saying you have to keep the lake so high that you have to send this disgusting crap into our community in order to give other people actual benefits. We're always in the negative column. They're in the positive column. What we're just fighting for right now is reduced harm. We're, there's never a point that we get benefit out of this. So stay in the fight. It's good news that they chose CC. Now we got to keep going and make sure that, that we don't have that plan destroyed uh, here in the future and have it changed so that it doesn't, so that we don't realize the benefit that that plan can really offer to our community. In that, it's always an honor to represent you uh, in Washington and at home. I always look more forward to being at home with you all. Look forward to seeing you all around. Y'all take care.